Well, hello, everybody. As we know, the American crocodile lives, at least in the United States, it lives in South Florida. Um, they are widespread throughout the Caribbean and um, Central and part of South America. So it's not like they're only in the United States and in Florida. But where they are in Florida is pretty like a small location. With all that being said, a new research publication, a translocation of American crocodiles. In the U.S., the American crocodile is found in the coastal areas of South Florida where a growing population of both humans and crocodiles has led to an increase in human-crocodile conflicts. One method uh, to reduce human-crocodile conflicts involves translocating or moving a crocodile from its capture site to another location several miles away. To better understand the effects of translocation on the movement, habitat use, body condition, and survival of translocated crocodiles, researchers captured and attached GPS trackers to 17 crocodiles. Seven crocodiles were translocated before release, while the remaining 10 were released back where they were captured as a control group. Findings showed that although crocodiles have a remarkable ability to return to their original capture site, distance does seem to play a role. Three crocodiles translocated 20 miles or less returned in under two weeks, or 28 miles or less returned in under two weeks, while three more moved over 68 miles uh, were not documented returning. One female crocodile was translocated 95 miles and was recaptured just a quarter mile from the original site over two and a half years after it was released. That's kind of crazy. Because of concerns regarding crocodiles returning as well as the stress associated with capture and translocation of this federally threatened species, the study concluded that crocodiles translocations have limited conservation value in Florida and may only be worth considering after all reasonable options are exhausted. Update. We rely on scientific studies like this one to continually evaluate and refine our management practices. The FWC uses every opportunity to educate the public on living with crocodiles. While focusing on public safety and safety of the crocodiles, we, um, we assess the history and circumstances of every crocodile complaint before making a management decision to take action. FWC biologists rely on the Crocodile-Human Interaction Response Plan, a joint plan with the FWC and USFWS to determine management actions. FWC relies on peer-reviewed science for its management. To access this full publication, click there. Uh, do crocodiles know their way home? Find out more for yourself. This project will be the movements of crocodile in the study. Okay, so basically, um, I mean, this makes total sense. Um, and like, so what they're trying to say is they're trying to see if moving them to different areas will help the populations. If there are too many in one spot or there's issues, if they move them somewhere that's a little less crowded, um, will that help spark the population in another place and help with the management? And this basically says, unless it's like really far away, it doesn't help. Because they come back and they they go to the exact same spot. So basically they got to let most of them be as long as possible. You know, as much as possible because they'll just come right back if that's where they are. Let's see, let me see. Here are the movements of the crocodiles. The crocodiles know their way home. Ooh, so that's one that was on the beach in Sebastian, I think. Um, so you can see kind of their native range. Yeah. So like Pinellas County southward, they can be found. It's crazy that they can be found in Pinellas. I've never seen one here, but I've heard of them being here. Um, map of the current range of the American crocodiles on the left versus hotspot map generated, um, using crocodile compliant data from 20, 2005 to 2022. Warm colors show areas of greatest human crocodile conflict. I mean, yeah, that's 
Miami, where everything is. Look at these Crocs. Look at these cute little Crocs. Going into your pool. Snatching your dog. <laughs> this plan allows uh, for the translocation of crocodiles under certain circumstances as a means to address human crocodile conflict. However, some translocated crocodiles return to their original capture site. Yeah. Okay. Transmitter was designed to acquire GPS positions every four hours while the animals were being tracked. This data was uploaded to a server uh, by satellite transmission every two days. You see the little blue blob on there. One group consisted of 10 free-ranging crocodiles that were captured. Fitted uh, with their GPS tag and released in their capture site, these crocodiles act like a control reference group. Capture sites in reference. These are where they were all captured. I have... I've done a lot of driving in this area right in here. Oh, and also down in the Keys. Um, the other group consisted of seven crocodiles that were captured, fitted with the GPS tag, and translocated. So you can see they were captured, I believe, where that flag is right there, and then this flag? Or no, that's where they were released. No, 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 no. So that's where they were released. The flags are where they were released. And the pins are where they were captured. That shows different ones. There was one that was in that one which was in Miami and dropped down Hollier County State Park. Cool. After being fitted with GPS tag in October 2018 and released at her capture site, she remains within a very constant and consistent area moving primarily within the canal where she was captured. That's So this right here is literally the bridge that you would take to go, um, to go out to the Keys right here. That's crazy. She's just moving back and forth between that. Like, yeah, that's nuts. The mismovement pattern continues until March 2019 when she begins to make forays across Barn Sound into Crocodile Lake National Wildlife refuge presumably to find a suitable nest site to lay your eggs that's crazy that's a big range i didn't think they would move that far in their time like live it in some salt water they were able to photograph her in may with a trail camera placed at a crocodile nest that had been predated by raccoons earlier in the spring coupled with their tracked movement this suggests she laid her eggs at the site and continued to periodically check her nest. That's cool. So so if raccoons are eating crocodile eggs, would it be more beneficial to let the let the pythons eat the raccoons so they're not eating crocodile eggs? <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. The GPS is then analyzed to give us a clear picture of the animal's home range, a useful tool to compare to our reference in translucent crocodiles. And it compared to Florida croc uh, crocodiles to crocodiles elsewhere. 95% home range, 50% home range. That's really cool. Reference crocodiles were characterized by slower meandering movements within stable home ranges, suggesting a familiarity with the surroundings. Uh, the home range of this reference crocodile was in the southwestern portion of Everglades National Park in an area known as uh, Cape Sable. Uh, it made regular trips from the coast to the small group of island or inland lakes over the course of several months. I guess we just bounced around in there. In contrast, translocated crocodiles were characterized by fast active directional movements suggesting an unfamiliarity with their surroundings and search for more suitable familiar habitats so basically they're scared they don't they don't they're just like i don't know this spot i'm getting out of here this is someone else's territory after 17 months tr5 crossed florida bay to reach long key um 39 kilometers from our original capture site shortly after making this crossing Location data downloaded from the GPS tag ceased. However, 
They were able to recapture this individual 0.42 kilometers from her original capture site two and a half years after release. Since we were not able to collect location data for this entire time, we do not know exactly how she returned home. Sure. The movement of this translocated crocodile highlights difference in behaviors between animals translocated shorter distances or less translocated longer distances. TR-1 was captured at Key Largo, right side of the map, and released 14 kilometers away at uh, Canal 111. Um, notice how this animal showed fast, active directional movements until slowing considerably upon reaching its original capture site a few days later. In this case, a golf course in Key Largo. Once there, its movements begin to look more like those reference crocodiles. So it's like, this is not my home. I want to go home. That's cool. That's just cool to watch them, how their movement is. Like, they find their spot they want to live. They, 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 they're trying so hard to find their way home. And then they find their way home. And they're like, all right, this is it. That's awesome. Wow. Look at how far they traveled. They're moving all over the place. That's nuts. Cool. This was a really cool study. This was a really cool study. I'm glad I looked into this. What do you all think about this whole thing? Do you think that this just means that we, we just shouldn't move the crocodiles? Like there's nothing we can do. We just got to protect where they are. Because, like, if you take them away from populated areas where they live, they're going to come right back to the populated areas. What, are you going to stop them from coming? They obviously only want to be in the area that they know. Just saying. It shows that their territories mean something to them. And, like, the, it's their home. Hey, this is my house. This is where I live. Otherwise, I'm not comfortable. Very interesting. Let me know what you think down below. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Keep it wild.